there's a whole mathematical world out there waiting to be explored. MathCrush.com wants to open the door to a new kind of maths video. My name is Spro, and I'm here to take you around the world and make math a little more interesting. These are our first videos, and we know the videos are not perfect, and of course, we made some mistakes. But we think you'll be entertained, so put up your feet, lean back, and enjoy the show. I'm standing here in a limestone field, and you might say, Spro, what's limestone? Well, limestone is made from dead marine life, and as they die underwater, they pile up on top of each other, and eventually make these cool rocks. Well, what happens is, the land pushes these rocks above water, and then the rain hits them, and makes these cool designs. It's kind of like giants were throwing rocks at each other. Well, you might say, Spro, what does this have to do with math? Well, science and math, they're related. And also, look at all the cool shapes and sizes. And this show is about polygons. Polygons. The word polygon comes from the Greek words poly, meaning many, and gon, meaning angles. So polygon means something with many angles. But nowadays, most people refer to a polygon as a two-dimensional object with many sides. Let's take a better look at polygons. Follow me. There's, there's. Triangles. Quadrilaterals. Pentagons. Hexagons. Heptagons. Octagons. Decagons. Pentagons. Heptagons. 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 It's only sprung. Before we learn more about polygons, I want to step back and take a look at what we should already know. Hey, Spro, you mean your prior knowledge, don't you? Yes, that's it. Care to take a look inside my brain? Okay, we're here. Let's see what I can remember. A point specifies an exact location. A line is a straight curve, or a bunch of points in a row, that go forever and ever. The arrows at the end tell us the line does not stop. A line segment is part of a line that is bounded by two points. Do you see the two points at the end? They tell us where the line starts and ends. The word intersect is used when two lines meet. Do you see the intersection of these two lines? If two lines never intersect or meet, they are called parallel lines. These two lines will always be the same distance apart. The point where two lines meet is called the vertex. An angle is created at the vertex. The angle is the amount of rotation that separates the two lines. In other words, it tells us how far apart the two lines are. So basically, you should know lines, line segments, parallel lines, perpendicular lines, vertices, and angles. See you on the other side. Polygon dots. For a shape to be a polygon, it has to have at least three sides. And of course, if a shape has three sides, it also has three angles. So to be a polygon, a shape must have three sides and three angles. And most importantly, for a shape to be a polygon, it has to be enclosed. In other words, it cannot be open. It has to be closed. Polygons. Polygon. Polygon. Hey there! 
you might be thinking, why are we talking about polygons? Well, you might not realize it, but they're everywhere. You might not even think about how many you see every day. Let's check it out. Triangles. Triangles can be classified into two categories, by their sides and by their angles. There's three of each. For sides, there's the scaling triangle, the isosceles triangle, and the equilateral triangle. For angles, there's the acute triangle, the obtuse triangle, and the right triangle. Let's take a look at them. When you add the interior angles of a triangle, it will always always equal 180 degrees. No matter how big or how small the triangle is, the angles will always equal 180 degrees. On a scaling triangle, all the sides are different lengths. An isosceles triangle has two sides that are the same length. Do you see the two tick marks? That tells us that those two sides are equal. And if the sides are the same length, that means the opposite angles must be equal. An equilateral triangle means that all the sides are the same length. Do you see the three tick marks? That tells us that all those three sides are equal. And if all the sides are equal, that means all the angles are equal, which tells us they must be 60 degrees, because 60 plus 60 plus 60 equals 180. On an acute triangle, all the angles are less than 90 degrees. On an obtuse triangle, one of the angles is bigger than 90 degrees. On a right triangle, one of the angles equals exactly 90 degrees. Do you see the little square? That tells us that angle equals 90 degrees, or is a right angle. Take a look at triangles, and soon we'll check out quadrilaterals. But before we move on, let's take a quick peek at a few other polygons you might see. Quadrilateral is a polygon with four sides. If you look at the word quadrilateral, you get quad, which means four, and lateral, which means sides. You put it together, you get quadrilateral, which means four sides. The ones you see the most are a trapezoid or trapezium, a parallelogram, a rectangle, a rhombus, and a square. No matter what kind of quadrilateral you have, if you add the interior angles up, you get 360 degrees. As you might have guessed, polygons can be moved. Math guys call this transformation. There are three major types of transformation. There's translation, also known as slide, rotation, or turn, and reflection, flip. When you do any of these transformations, the figure, the size, the angles, the line segments never change. Let's take a better look at them. Translation simply means 
Moving a polygon. Nothing else. See? We just move it. Rotation is when a figure is turned about a given point. The center can be anywhere. It doesn't even have to be on the polygon. If you rotate 360 degrees and follow any of the points on the polygon, they will make a circle. Reflection is when a figure is moved to the other side of a line and its points are still the same distance from the line as the original polygon. If you draw a polygon and then a line and flip the polygon over the line, the points will be the same distance from the line on both sides. It's kind of like looking at a mountain through a lake or holding an item like your cell phone up to a mirror. The Chinese, famous for walls, rice, pandas, and fireworks, created a game and a way of telling stories using polygons. Tangram consists of seven polygons, which are put together to form shapes. The seven polygons are two small, one medium, and two large right triangles, and a square and a parallelogram. The basic rules are, you must use all seven shapes, they must lay flat, they must touch, and none may overlap. Today, tangrams are seen and used around the world and are a fun and interesting way to learn more about mathematics. Here, let me show you. I'll tell you a story using tangrams. And remember, all the forms I create are made using only the seven polygons. Once upon a time, there was a rabbit who was tired of living in a box. He dreamed of sailing away and seeing the world. He wanted to climb mountains and run through the trees of the beautiful lands across the seas. He wanted to see animals from faraway places and meet people who had different faces. He wished he could taste and drink foods that made him smile and changed his moods. But the other rabbits laughed and told him, no way. You're a rabbit, not an explorer, and you have to stay. I know many of you have been told this before, that things are not possible and you cannot be more. But remember the rabbit I told you before? Well, one day he disappeared and he did explore. He just opened the door and saw so much, much more. show. And remember, math is everywhere and anywhere. And math is math. It's supposed to be fun. We'll see you next time.